Good morning, Natalie. How are you? Hi, Anna. Good morning. I'm very well, thanks. And yourself? How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm very happy that you are here with me in this YouTube channel. And so I like that you present yourself and tell us who you are and what do you do. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for having me here, first of all, and for sharing this space with me. Well, I'm Natalie. Um, I'm an English teacher and I have my own methodology called um, Sapiens Lair. OK, so I do a little bit of um, I give life tools and entrepreneurship to my students. OK, and everything in English. So it's like an inversion um, type of English to learn naturally in a home um, space where kids feel comfortable and they feel, you know, like if they were at home. Fantastic. So you have here in San Lorenzo, this is space is in your house where you teach kids. How old are they? Um, right now they are between 12 and 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the age group that I teach. And um, I like to start from a young age, from 12, where they already have a little bit of English, or at least they have some kind of sense of the English language. And I just put into practice and speaking and listening what they already learned in school, like all the grammar and all the writing they've learned there. My classes, so, so they can put them into practice. And your classes are made individually or or are they also in group? They are both individually and in groups. Yeah. And right now I've actually bumped most of my kids. Actually, I have my 12 year olds and above all my teenagers are online now. Mm -hmm. And I only have groups at home from eight to 11 year olds. OK. Mm -hmm. And how many in that group can you more or less manage? Yeah, um, so I normally have like five max in my groups, but right now there are about three in the groups. Better because it's almost private. Yes. Better yes, that, that's yeah. why I like to work with smaller groups because I like to give the individual attention mm -hmm. and because I also work um, different types of learning methods. So not yes. everybody learns uh, the same way. So, you know, I study each one of them as I like the first couple of months and then according to the way they learn, then I start applying techniques so where everybody can be learning and having yes. fun at the same time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Fantastic. So, and, and so if you want, we can start with the reading of Little Women. Yes, you for are sure. I'm excited. <laughs> with me. So I'm very happy that you are supporting us. Uh, this project of the theater, English to theater group that we started last September. And so we are going to read, for those of you who have the script, we are going to read the pages 23, from the 23 till the 25, okay? And Natalie is going to be um, reading the narration and uh, Meg, uh, Miss March, Joe, right? Characters, and I'll be helping you with Amy. Okay. Before. All right. And we will comment sometimes also in the middle the vocabulary and expressions, as always I do. So let's start. Of course. Okay. Interior, kitchen, the March house, morning, winter day. Bed lamb and bad mood to run breakfast. Laundry hangs everywhere, drying. Bed scampers after kittens. Hannah rattles pans. Joe bolts toast. Marmy scribbles a letter as Meg irons Amy's sash and Amy rushes to finish a slate full of sums. A kitten springs and clings to Meg's skirt like burr. Yeah, like a bear. So let's like come certain words that you found interesting here. Yes, well on this one I could say bed lamb, which mm -hmm. is new to me actually okay this is not a common word in our language but it does mean confusion or chaos yes and then um scampers okay which these words means like she hurried or she uh, runs towards the kittens yes and then rattles pans so that means like she has uh pans pots and pans and they are, she's like moving them. So they're clinking to each other. 
Um, and then the expression, Joe bolts toast. Mm -hmm. So to bolt means like you grab something and you hurry up and put it in your mouth, no? Um, Marmy scribbles a letter as Meg irons. So to scribble means to write or to write something carelessly. Okay, uh, with not too much care. Yeah. Um, Amy sash and Amy rushes. Sash, I don't remember what that means. Ah, uh, it's a type of clothing that you wear um, around your waist. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The forehead or the body, but it's is yes. In Spanish, we would say. Uh, como faja. Exactly. Oh, right? thank you. Okay. Very good. Yeah, that is a new word for me too. So. <laughs> me too as well. So no worries. Yeah. Um, Russia to finish a slate full of sums. Mm -hmm. Um, remind me, a slate, ah, the slate is a blackboard, okay? So this is what's commonly used in this era, no? Uh, kids would always go around with their slate, with their little blackboard, where they would do this. In this case, she's doing sums, which means mathematics. Yes, well done, fantastic. And any other expression from here? Mm. I would also add the, the written is B, U, and double, double R. And actually said with the uh, sound, so it's the, the, that it's touch or also erizo. Mm -hmm. um, very interesting. I didn't know that one. Um, so let's continue. Okay. Meg March. Ow. Beth, if you don't keep these horrid cats in the cellar, I'm going to drown them. So cellar, in this case, it's a space or a dark room, which is normally found under the, um, the house. OK, um, so it's normally dark and this is where we can put away food or maybe just anything actually yeah. that we don't normally use. Yes, a synonym of that would be basement or you basement. Also can say the stock room. Yes, fantastic. Exactly. So Joe seizes the kitten and tosses it to Beth, who lets out a cry. Mrs. March. Girls, I must get this letter off. Amy March. Is 300 divisible, divisible by 7? Joe March. Everything's divisible by everything. Hustling Amy into her cloak. Hurry, you'll make us late. So hustling Amy to her cloak. Hustling, meaning pushing her to go a bit faster. And cloak means um, it's like a jacket with a hood that has no sleeves. It just kind of hovers over your body. That's a cloak. Like it. So exterior is streets of Concord, winter day, slush. Miserable February day, a bony old horse strains as her master berates and beats her. The old mare is hitched to a wagon mired in the slush. People with raw, cold faces avert their eyes from a Union soldier amputee begging in the street. Mm. Clutching her slate, Amy slogs through sloppy snow after Joe and Meg. Joe bundles her skirts around her knees, swearing blackly. Okay, there are a lot of words here, so let's go. Yes, very interesting words. Well, one funny one, bony, right? Yep. Which is, um, to that means that you can see your bones. Mm -hmm. So this means this horse was very, very skinny, very thin. So thin you can see their bones. Yeah. And then... He says, as her master berates and beats her. So berates means like to grab on with a, um, with what the horses carry and then obviously beats them no, with the stick. Um, and then hitched, which means that it is grabbed onto or clinged on to a wagon. OK. Yeah. And then mired uh, to so the, walking in snow is tough so mired means they kind of getting stuck inside the snow yes in spanish we will say barado right right uh-huh and then their cold faces avert their eyes um so this means like they would cover their faces no to avoid looking at the poor mpt soldier right so he's not just any uh person begging in the street this is a soldier who doesn't have an amputee means that doesn't have like a leg or an arm mm. 
Okay, so I'm guessing to avert is more like, you know, covering their faces to avoid looking. Yeah, avert literally means avoid. Yeah, avoid yeah. looking. Yeah, so this is kind of sad. It's, it's, sad, but it's also very well written because in very yes. few lines, we can see that we are living in a period of the civil war. Yes. And also the word slash is also very interesting. Can, do you remember what is the meaning? Yeah, well, slash is um, ice. So ice slash meaning like when it's almost watery. Okay, yes. so kind of like a drink of ice that with the ice when it's uh, blended into very small. Uh, it, that, that is slush. Yeah, the atmosphere is, it has been snowing a lot. <clears throat> yes. And now the snow is starting starting to melt. To melt away, it's exactly. It's kind of um, watery yeah. snow that, that makes everything more difficult. And that's why we are going to see that uh, Amy is having trouble with, uh, with the slate. Um, yes. What else? So, for example, slugs. Swearing blackly. Swearing blackly. <laughs> so, this is like saying bad words, right? Like, uh, yeah, she's not talking very well. <laughs> she's yeah. very upset. Upset and angry. Yeah. We could say in, instead of blackly, we could say um, blackly. Instead of blackly, we could say angrily. Angrily, exactly. So, let's continue. Well done. Okay. So, Joe March. Blast these wretched skirts by Jehoshaphat. Next winter, I'm wearing trousers. Okay. Amy. Let's comment before I say Amy. Mm -hmm. Let's comment on the expressions that Joe has just said. Yeah, so she said, blast these wretched skirts. So, blast means like, um, like forget these skirts, no? Blast, literally in Spanish, we would say vaya o maldita sea, vaya con V y con Y. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like being mad because they're not useful, right? Yeah, it's kind of damn it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a slang word. And wretched? Wretched skirts. Um, wretched skirts, um, like rugged, like rugged, like um, useless. Yes, like useless uh -huh, or miserable, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, Amy says, scandalized at the... F ah, Jehoshaphat, sorry, before we move to... Can you explain? Yes. So what? Jehoshaphat. So Jehoshaphat is a Bible name. Okay, mm -hmm. so in this time, instead of saying Joseph, so they would say jo Jehoshaphat. <laughs> Jehoshaphat. Instead of Jesus, for example, mm -hmm. they say this, this name. Yes. Wretched. Yes. And wretched is like that. Wretched. Uh, that's a difficult pronunciation for us. Wretched. And because it ends in ED and before it's CH, the sound of, we need to really pronounce the E at the end. So, wretched. Very good. Um, Amy Mark says, scandalized at the thought, you are not. And don't say blast and wretched, and you know what? Joe March. I like good, strong words. <laughs> Amy stumbles, and her slate lands in a puddle. Joe strides on. Amy retrieves her slate, erased. She burst into tears. So Amy stumbles. So to stumbles means that she's almost like falling. Maybe she tripped on something. <laughs> And in her slate lands in a puddle. A puddle is maybe like a small hole of water. Mm -hmm. okay. And then Joe strides on. To stride on means that she keeps he she keeps walking. Okay. To, yes. to stride to stride means to keep stepping ahead. Yes. Uh, retrieves. There's a lot of big words here, no? Retrieves. I uh huh. Retrieves um, meaning to take out. To to get back. The uh -huh. puddle, the yeah, 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 to take out from the puddle, um, and then she, to burst into tears, mean, meaning that she cries out into tears in a uh, in the situation, <laughs> yeah, of her situation. <laughs> so she just like pretty much just starts crying crazily, I'm guessing. Yes, <laughs> I so just imagine. Oh, blast, yeah. Meg comes back 
to put Amy to rights. She glances anxiously a fine, at a fine house, makes wealthy mistress, dour face peeks out, and her two spoiled children with her. So this, um, I like this phrase, to put Amy to rights. So this means that Meg comes back to come, kind of calm her, no? Calm her stress because, you know, she was stuck in the, in the slush. Yeah. In the snow, in a puddle. So, you know, she's come back to um, put her right, not to take her tears away and to all right, yeah. get, get up, you know? Yes, and Meg is the oldest, so we can, and Amy is the youngest, so we can see that Meg is a, acting like a mother here like right mm -hmm. let's continue um and then dour face peeks out so to dour means to like slowly like you can only see the faces no like from maybe from here it up peeks out it means that and yes. dour it's an, an adjective that means severe or severe severe mm -hmm. the the faces are severe we could say Okay. So our faces, our is an adjective, and peeks out is what you are saying, yes. Right. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so Meg said... In Meg, Meg in, March. Yes. Oh, there's Mrs. King. I'm tardy. Amy March. Oh, Meg, must I go to school today? Mayn't I go to work with you, please? I can hardly hold my head up at school. I owe at least a dozen lines. Um, we can explain here that head up at a school, so I can hardly hold up, uh, hold my head up at a school. It's not only, it's not the meaning of that she she's sleepy or something like that. It's more like the liderazgo. So to head up is to be to have a role. <laughs> a, a, she's a kind of a leader, but because she owns a dozen lines, she is having troubles with this role. And so Joe Mark says now. Um, lines mm -hmm. and Meg, Meg March. March. Are limes the fashion now? Amy March. Of course they are. It's nothing but lines now. Everyone keeps them in their desk and trades them for beads and things. And all the girls treat each other at receives. And let's explain receives is like the break that they have for lunch or for in the middle of the morning. If you don't bring lines to school, you are nothing. You might as well be dead. I've had ever so many lines, and I can't pay anyone back. So much. No wonder you never learn anything at that school. <laughs> but Meg is unt untying the corner of her handkerchief. Meg March continued. I know how it feels to do without any little luxuries when everyone around us takes such treats for granted. But we are not the Hummels. Not yet. Here's a quarter. Marmy gave me the rag money this month. Um, so handkerchief. So handkerchief is a piece of cloth that normally used to wipe your nose or to clean things off. So instead of napkins, they have this cloth. Yes. Um, Luxuries. So luxuries are those things that um, maybe cost more, okay, or um, shiny things. Yes. And then there's a phrase here. It says, take such treats for granted. So to take such treats for granted, meaning that they don't value what they're getting. Okay? Yeah. So it's like taking value away. From mm. something maybe they are used to getting. So, mm. um, a quarter. A quarter is a coin, an American coin. It's 25 cents. Mm -hmm. And then the rag money. So, rag money is kind of uh, a monthly allowance. So, it's mm. money that they probably get each month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From mommy, Marmy, which is the, who is the mother. Yes, very good. And the Hamels, can you explain? Well, no, I will explain. The Hamels are the neighbors that they were in need, that the father ran away. So it's the mother with six children. And these little women with the mother is helping them a lot. And that now Marmy, uh, Marmy sorry, Meg, is explaining and, and, and saying that they are not still the Hamels. So she's going to give her that quarter to Amy. 
Um, so we have finished, I think. Uh, no, the last, have you, yes, let's, let's read the last part. Amy throws. Amy throws her arms around Meg, disgusted. Joe strides off. Meg hurries toward the service entrance of the wealthy house. Okay, let's comment on that. How important it is that we are mentioning the wealthy house where Meg is entering now because she works there as a as a teacher. She's teaching and taking care of kids as we we have been doing as well in in, in our work. Uh, so yes. In those times, girls went to their house, their house, wealthy houses, and they were the uh, the teachers. Yeah, the tutors. Yeah, I find I find it interesting how they emphasize so much on the different levels of living, right? Mm, the different society. social social types. Uh -huh. Yes, exactly. Interesting because they are emphasizing how. Uh, also, I guess they, um, although they are in need as well, this this family, um, they are supporting others, and I I like especially like this. And from from little women, how willing they are to go to others and and help them in their with their things. Right. So we have finished with the reading. Let's come in. Thank you. You have done it fantastic. Um, I, I really like your accent and the way the way you read. Um, it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> yeah. Fun. So let's come, let's come in, Natalie. Three expressions that you would highlight that you say. Oh, I'm going to learn or review with you now three expressions that we have read. Three expressions. Expressions of all words, doesn't matter. Well, like I've mentioned before at the beginning, Bedlam, which was yeah. one of them. Okay, yeah. I, that was new for me. <laughs> and it was, um, the meaning is... I is confused, confused or chaotic, right? Yes, confusion or chaotic or chaos. It's a, it's a noun. Yeah. Um, mired. Yeah. I like mired. That's a, that's a nice little word. Yeah. Uh, so that's to be like to be stuck, no? Yeah. Very good. Yes. And and I like dower. Dower because yeah. um, it's another little fancy word. Like you can actually use this in your day to day. Yeah. Okay, level up. Uh -huh. that, yes, exactly. So a dower is severe uh, faces, in this case, flower face, yeah. Any other that you... I like, I like uh, blast, like That's the damage right. that it happened before with my cousin, also we were reading one and it happens that we found also the meaning of uh, damage, it's a slang word that can be used nowadays as well, blast. Um, also I like well, slate, you know, this, this little black mm -hmm. that Amy is, is, is working on it, uh, her homework. And I would also say, well, bo bony, we said the skeletal. Oh, yeah, bony. <laughs> horse, right? Yeah. And me, escrito M A R E, con español pare, pero que dicho se dice me, and that's Una, una yegua. So because we say horse and that's it. Oh, and may I remember that appears over there? Yeah. Any other thing that you would like to highlight? Um, no, I just, I think it's a very expressive, um, very expressive story. So thanks for reminding me about this. It's a very, it's a classic, definitely. Yeah. I was probably, what? Eight, nine year old, nine years old when I when I saw the the movie. Um, I am actually appreciating it. How we have not changed much. Mm. The only the only thing we've changed is maybe the way we dress, no. <laughs> but many of these like social divisions, like how they still exist. So um, it's quite interesting. I am going to be watching the movie again this weekend. Yes, and yeah. <laughs> You can find it in the same, uh, in, if you enter in my website, uh -huh. in the place that it say theater, on the bottom of that page, you could see that uh, it appears the two links to two movies. The last one, 2019, with Meryl Streep playing the role of mm -hmm. Antwort, 
1994, which is the movie that we are actually reading in this script, from uh, the movie that Winona Ryder was playing the role of Joe. Uh, so there you have the links, you could watch them. And actually, this video will appear also on that page with you. Okay, perfect. <laughs> it's because this is something that's repelling on me, you know? I know. I'm like, ah, oh. it's I so know. frustrating. I but I know I need it. I know I want it. Yeah. And because I want to be, um, I want to stay at a level, you know? And I want to keep going up. Exactly. Because I know, and I think maybe you have also, you also go through this, but um, I've been about 10 years or even more away from American culture. Mm -hmm. So being away from American culture, having to speak Spanish almost pretty much every day, you know, you need to keep up your level. Like, what am I doing? What am I watching? What am I reading? And what language am I reading it in? You know, so mm -hmm. I can keep having that level. So mm -hmm. it's a constant study, constant, you know, yeah. information. So it's good. It's good. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, for, and it's not unfortunately, I love studying. I'm Gemini's, I'm very curious myself, and I, I bookworm, we could say. I love reading, you know, this This is not by chance, it's because yeah, I, I buy know. books and, and giving to people. So these are, um, this is how I approach teaching is I learn and I study because I know that I will be a better teacher. Yes. Because I teach what I love. Exactly. And, and it's inevitable that you express what you love. Exactly. And people learn from you because you are excited about what you are saying. And I know you have that. All right, thank you. <laughs> on your face. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the last uh, the last couple of courses that I've done, um, they're actually not about language. Mm -hmm. It's more about how to be with people, how to deal with emotions, mm. how to um, manage Mm. you know these emotions because i'm sure it happens to you but m many of us when we're learning a new language we are afraid mm. we are timid we we think everybody is judging us mm -hmm. you know mm. so it's like we have all these limitations yeah so these courses help me uh with my students you know like to coach them in a more intimate way inner and yeah. so you know they can accept the process and they can have, they can actually learn it faster. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because you, yeah. you are also as a teachers, we manage energy, mm -hmm. the energy of, the, of their key, of the kids interacting with you, but also between them and with themselves, how they cope with their own difficulties, with their own mistakes, and they accept that they learn by mistakes. We all learn by mistakes. I One of the things that I love showing to my students is my own mistakes. Exactly. Every time I do a mistake, I know they will learn it faster because of yeah. my mistakes. So I love being a little bit crap, you know, like I love yeah. being a little bit messy and a little bit cramps, uh, clumsy and a little bit human, you know. Yeah, yeah I, I was going to say that. Let's just say human. Yeah, no, we're all exactly. human. We make mistakes. Yeah, of course. And I love doing that and showing it because it looks like if you are in YouTube or you are, uh, if you are a teacher, you, you should be perfect. And it's like, oh my God, perfection yeah. is overestimated. Yeah, we're far from perfect. Yeah, We are far from that. We don't need it because this is about a process and you learn thanks to your mistake and you'll be more human. You are also more human and also mm, humble. Yeah. By facing your own mistakes, you understand others' fears. And that, yeah. that makes you connect with others. And that is something that if someone is already telling you, oh, you are not native speaker, you are not native uh, teacher, then you can't teach my kids. Okay, fine. If you have that mindset, better don't come to me. Yeah. Go true. to native teacher. There are plenty. Yes. See if they have their these kind of values that I am offering. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's not about being perfect at speaking one specific language. It is about communicating your own ideas through any language. Language, exactly. So language is a tool. It's not our destiny. Our destiny is to share emotions, be in peace, and be good to each other. To communicate, exactly, yeah. And if, if language is helping you to rescue people from being miserable, from being sad, 
from from being suffering all kind of bullying at the school. I mean, if language is helping you to rescue people that are really in pain, then you can say that your English is fantastic, or you can say that the way that you manage the languages is good. It's, yeah. it's doing a good service to the world, and that's what that's my intention with with these connections as well. Yeah, I think I think this is where we you and I connect because more than the language, we want to connect people. No, yeah. we don't. We want to take away their limitations and open them to the world because that's what this is. We are open. You never know where you're going to end up. I mean, imagine I'm a Mexican raised in the USA and now I ended up in Spain. What? Multicultural. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's happening? You know, we are not. We're nomads, so it's. You never know where you're going to end up. And I think in, in um, one advantage that we have is that English is a universal language right now. And it's not going away. No. It's actually getting stricter. It's something that uh, I have heard many professionals, you know, I cannot get there because of my English. I cannot do this because of my English. I no. want to have that position. They won't give it to me because of my English. Mm. So it's a struggle that people are actually facing as professionals. Yeah. So yeah. Learning to help them cope with their limitations so they yeah. can actually reach their goals. Yes, it, that's exactly. And and also value their own mother language. Exactly. And that's why I like saying, okay, you mind your own la mother language as well. Keep learning and keep reading your own mother language. Don't underestimate the potentiality of your own mother language is full of culture, full of beautiful things that English native people and American people want to learn Spanish because we have a fantastic cultural Mexico yes. for Spanish, Spanish, Mexico and here in the peninsula, it yes. doesn't matter where we are. Uh, we have a language that is full of beautiful literary works as well and art. So, you know, it's, it's not about choosing one. It's about saying I can combine both, and I'm happy because I I have both, both, and I, you can swap from one to another whenever you want. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. And that's your face. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, and I had uh, actually I had a lot of fun with this uh, script reading. I've learned a lot, and um, I think I'm going to read the book first. Yes. Okay, you promised me a book, so yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna wait for it. I'm gonna wait. <laughs> no, I will give it to you one day. We can meet. Yeah, I would definitely love to meet you in person. Uh -huh, that would be wonderful. Yeah, and uh, this connection. yeah, so sa Friday evenings, I, I'll be there in Paseo. So if you want to come along, any, any, um, what any time? Pa uh, Paseos is this, this, this the room? In, no, yeah, but what time? What time do you do it? Um, so, uh, 5.30 to 7 is one hour and a half. So you yeah, could come. I could probably go for a half hour because I have a class at 6.30, but I will definitely go by today because I would love to see to see your space. Okay. And, um, even if it's just a short time, but I would love, and I, I want to meet you in person. Honestly, I would love to give you like a hug. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward yes. to see you and hug you and say, no worries. Yeah, we're, we are doing good. We're doing good. We are we are fighting for our dreams. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sure. And if I know anyone that is that the ages and the way that you teach, I will send it to you for sure. Okay, and you can count on me with that too. Thank you. So I'll see you later. At yes. um, we start at at five thirty and we finish at seven. If you can do me a favor, send me the address. Yeah. Okay. I'll and then you. I'll see you later. Yeah, okay. I'll send it to you by the link. I'll All see right. you later. Bye. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm going to stop the recording, but don't go.